who attempt to find them. So uh, I'm Ian, I, uh, I'm a farmer and I work here at Gander's Farm. Uh, I'm a dairy farmer and we've got uh, lots of dairy goats at the minute, I'm just in the process of feeding the kids, but I also volunteer for Northamptonshire Search and Rescue. Ted gets very excited about uh, the search and uh, what goes on, he knows the ringtone, the call out, when he hears that go off, he tends to, his ears prick up, he gets more interested. Uh, as soon as the trousers go on, the jumper goes on. He gets very, very uh, excited, starts bouncing around the house, he knows he's off, off the go. To him, it's just a really big game. He doesn't know any different. Northamptonshire is a very small county, but uh, we need search dogs in the county because we do get a large number of missing people. Um, not the same reasons that Mountain Rescue do, but very different reasons. Ted just formed part of the overall team, of which there's about 35 operational members. Um, when we are actually out working on a proper job, we'll have a support with us, who's our medical backup. And uh, if it's a big, um, big find that we've got and we need more help, we can phone that in, radio that in, and they'll come out with another team to help back us up. Best part for me um, is, well, a, a fantastic part was the other day when we went out on a search and we saw the missing person reunited with the family. That was a fantastic feeling. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for coming to see our demonstration here at Crufts 2022. We're Lowland Rescue. Lowland Rescue is a volunteer search and rescue organisation throughout the UK. Um, we have 35 teams nationally, over 2,000 people, and we provide services to the police predominantly, but the other statutory emergency services to help locate vulnerable missing people. We provide services, everything from search, water rescue, drone provision, all kinds of stuff um, that you would see in a search and rescue scenario. But obviously, this is Crufts, so what we're going to show you today is the work of some of our search dogs. So traditionally, most people think of a search and rescue dog as someone lost on a mountainside or a hillside, um, but we're a lowland rescue team. So a lot of the environment we work in is traditionally lowland, as it says in the name, the clue is in the name. So it's forests, farmlands, parks, countryside, um, suburban spaces, that kind of thing. So all of the dogs and handlers you see here today, they're all volunteers. They all give up their time to train their dogs and to work their dogs. And as you can see here today, we have quite a range of different dogs all around the country. Everything from Jack Russells to Collies, everything in between, loads of gun dogs, this kind of stuff. Anything with a good working ethic and a good nose. And basically to the dogs, this is just a great game of hide and seek. That's all it is to them. They absolutely love it. So the first dogs we're going to show you here today are the air scenting dogs. So um, these, these guys, they're what we call nose up dogs and they're indiscriminate. They show, any, they show on any human sense. So they don't care who they're looking for. Um, they just go out and find. And this is changed in st three stages. So stage one. Stage one, we start with a little game called Piggy in the Middle. And they've all preempted by commentary, look, they've all started already because they're so eager. So Piggy in the Middle is a little game we play with people not, that the dog doesn't necessarily know and it builds the dog's confidence in going to people that it doesn't know. People it knows are good fun. And it builds this confidence running backwards and forwards. And also the running backwards and forwards you'll see later on is quite important to us. So we've got a few of our guys around the outside playing Piggy in the Middle. So that's the beginning of stage one. Then what we move to, on to are what we call scene runaways. So this is where we start teaching the dog to actually look for someone. The, miss, the pretend missing person, we give them the dog's toy, the dog sees them go, the dog wants its toy or its reward, so it chases after the person to get its reward. And we build this distance up over time slightly, we just keep getting further and further and further and further away until the dog's happily going to someone it doesn't know. So then, what's the next step? We move on to what we call an unseen runaway. So this is where the hide and seek starts. 
So literally, the dog comes out. By now, it knows someone's going to be going away with its toy, but we don't let them see them go. So the dog has to start working, and it has to start using its nose. And that's what we call an unseen runaway. And this is where we really start building distance for the handlers. So, they do this for quite a while. Once they're happy, we're happy, they can find someone. They're sniffing for someone, they're happily sniffing someone out. So, the next stage we go on to after this, they need to actually tell us they found someone. So we're gonna do a quick switch over. And this is stage two. This is what we call the alert stage. So the alert is what it says on the tin. The dog is going to alert us to the fact it has found someone. Now go back to what I said earlier on, a lot of the people we're looking for are vulnerable, they're suffering from dementia, um, Alzheimer's, or they're despondent. So we don't necessarily want the old traditional dog stays by the person and starts barking. Not everybody likes dogs, some people don't want to be found. So we have a variation of alerts. So we're gonna start on this side with Annabelle and Cassine. And Cassine is gonna perform what we call a tug alert. I think she's a bit overawed. It's big in here, there's lots of smells. Yay, well done, Cassine. Big, big round of applause for Cassine, please. Not easy in this environment, and obviously it's normally trees and farms we're out training on. Well done, Annabelle. On this side, we've got Andy and Willow. So we'll see, uh, see if you can tell how Willow alerts Andy to how she's found somebody. Off you go, Andy. Yeah, good girl, Willow. Big round of applause for Andy and Willow. Over on the far side here, we've got River and Mandy. Now, River's only seven months old. She's only just started. This is your more traditional alert, though. This is what we call a standover bark. This is where the dog goes out, finds their missing person, and normally... Yeah, good girl, River. Well done. But that, once that distance has been built up on that, once Mandy's trained her and built that distance up, Mandy could be three, four, five hundred metres away and the dog will start barking but stay at the misma. That's your more traditional sort of mountain rescue type alert, if you like. And on this side, we've got Aaron and Chili. So sleep, see where we go with this one. This was one of my old dog's alerts. You've seen this one before. Oh, just missed. Well done, Chili. Big round of applause. So as you can see, the key to these alerts is slightly different in that the dogs generally are coming away from the missing person. Um, sometimes that's key for us. We don't want the dog staying with a missing person. We want them coming back and telling us and then taking them to them. So that's the alert stage. It's one of the most difficult stages. It takes a long time to train and it can be quite, quite a cheeky one. The dogs uh, tend just to want their ball. They don't want to tell us, so uh, long one to train. So that's stage two, again, takes quite a while. It takes about between 12 and 18 months to train a dog up to full qualification. So we're having a quick switch out again now. So once we've got the alert stage, that stage nailed, it's home for tea and medals. We found our missing person. The dog's told us they found somebody. Let's all go home, thank you very much. Hang on, the dog's come back, told us it's found someone. The dog then needs to show us where that person is. So stage three is what we call the refind. So it's the whole sequence. Um, the dog is then. Do you want to start your sequences? My commentary is awful, by the way. Sorry. So the dogs are now going out, coming back to the handler, telling them they found somebody, and then taking them back. Traditionally, they'll use a command like "show me." something like that. You can see Bruce is, a, Bruce is another bark, but he's a come back and a bark. And so these are all, like we say, they're all known as air scenting dogs. They're off lead dogs, they're air scenting, and they, the reason we use them is they can, it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. They can cover huge areas and search them pretty quickly, a lot faster, especially in the dark than you, than you or I could. Well done, guys. So that's our air centers. Big round of applause for our air centers. So 
So now we're going to show you something slightly different. These are air sensing dogs. So they are not scent specific. They don't care who they're looking for. They're just going out looking for a person out there. If it's a sunny Saturday afternoon in your local park, we get lots of alerts because you've got everybody out with their ice creams and this kind of stuff. But what we're going to show you now are what we call scent specific dogs. Um, these are what we call our ground scenting dogs. So they're going to follow the scent of a person along the ground, but it's a of a specific person. So this takes quite a lot of training for obvious reasons. Um, so what we're going to show you is just a very quick little demonstration of a bit of an identity parade. So we're going to bring three people out into the arena. They're going to come out, and if you watch carefully, one of them, which I think is Mandy, is going to drop a scent article. Now Mandy's been wearing that this morning. Um, so she's going to drop her article. Rue's not going to cheat, Joe and Rue. Rue's not cheating at all, she's pretty good actually. She's not even watching where she's going because she doesn't know it's her. Joe's going to let Rue give her a chance to hide, Joe, for goodness sake. <laughs> so Rue is then going to follow the trail of Joe. Now, obviously, again, difficult environment for these guys. They're not used to working in here with all these smells. There's been loads of dogs in here beforehand. Yeah, good girl, Rue. Well done. Well done. This is a really useful discipline. This can save us all loads of time. For this, we need a scent article, but we also need a place last seen. So we need a starting point. If we've got that starting point, this dog can save us so much time. It can save so many assets from the police being called out. Because it can at least tell us which direction they went, if not follow them right to the source. Sometimes, if someone's gone missing from a care home, sometimes they haven't even gone missing from the care home. Joe can work the dog around the care home and fairly confidently say they haven't even left. So, so there we go. So like I say, thank you very much for coming and watching us. I know that was a very, very short demonstration, but we're limited to what we can do in an arena with some tents. We don't normally, uh, obviously, train our dogs like this. If you're at all interested in what we do, we have a stand in Hall 3, Stand 2A. Please come and have a chat. Say hello if you're interested in joining. We don't just train dogs, like I've said before. We have drones, we have canoes, bikes, foot searching, medical stuff that goes on. Um, so please come along, have a chat. Enjoy your day at Crufts. And uh, thank you very much for coming to see our demonstration. And look forward to seeing you all soon. Thank you.